Sambi Broom. I'm a web developer, and I'm the founder of Web Girls Code. Web Girls Code, well, first of all, I have a history question for you. I know it's Saturday, and nobody wants to think about school, but has anyone here ever heard of Emily Post? Raise your hand if you've heard of her. Okay. She became famous for teaching etiquette to young ladies, such things as how to properly set a dinner table, or which fork you're supposed to eat your salad with, in general, manners in social settings. Well, today, I'm here to tell you about a STEM-based program that will become just as important to young ladies right here in the Midlands in the 21st century as Emily Post etiquette training was to young ladies in America in the early 20th century. But first, let me tell you a little bit about myself. So I was born in California, then we moved to Hawaii, then we moved back to California. And that's where I went to elementary school and junior high school. Now, since I've been in South Carolina, I've learned that it's called middle school. So I went to elementary school and middle school in the 80s. Now, tell me something you know about the 80s. What's something you know? Crazy hairstyles. Crazy hairstyles. What else do you know about the 80s? Madonna. And see, for, what do you know about the 80s? Reaganomics. Reaganomics. So we're covered, you guys know a lot about the 80s. Well, for me, it was Madonna, big hair, Cabbage Patch Kid dolls, and our cutting edge technology was Pac-Man. We didn't have handheld computing devices, like a smartphone or a tablet. And the idea of having a personal computer in your home was unheard of. So imagine my excitement as a fourth grader when I go to school one day and our teacher tells us, we're gonna go to a new class. So we leave our regular class, go over to the next classroom, and there's a room full of computers. I was mesmerized. This was the beginning of what you guys now call computer lab. So I'm standing this, in this room, amazed, and then guess what? They're gonna actually let a bunch of nine and 10 year olds touch these computers? That was unheard of. But that's where my love of technology started. So I went home and I told my mom, they actually let us touch a computer today. And we get to go back every week and use these computers. Well, she wanted to foster my love of technology. Now, how many of you here use a word processing program like Microsoft Word or OpenOffice, something like that? Okay. This was my first word processor. No, it wasn't a program on that. That's a brother word processor. So in an effort to foster my love of technology, my mom bought us this. I was excited because now I could type up my papers, hit a button and print them and save them. I was just amazed. Now imagine my excitement when my uncle gave us a used Commodore 64 computer. I could play adventure games and I could save my work on a floppy disk. And then sometime in the early 90s, my mom was able to buy us a brand new Packard Bell computer. Looks a little closer to what you're used to now. Now despite my love of technology, if you were to come and see me in a classroom, I was that shy girl. I was the girl with the glasses whose friends affectionately called a nerd, but you know, now that I think about it, they may not have been my friends. But I wasn't participating in classroom discussions, especially if it involved science or math. Even if I knew the answer, I kept quiet. But when I would go home, I was exploring the bulletin board system. Now let me explain what that was. How many of you here are familiar with Craigslist? Okay, picture Craigslist with a black background and rainbow colored words. A bulletin board system was kind of like a message board and you could instant message people. It wasn't very instant like it is today though. You type your message and you'd have to sit and wait because it's traveling through the internet on a telephone line. It had to get to that person and their response had to get back so it took a little while. So I'm exploring the bulletin board system and I'm learning about this new thing called the World Wide Web. But nobody at school knew I was doing this. I was a closet techie. Now let's fast forward 20 years. I'm still in a classroom, but this time I'm a substitute teacher in a seventh grade classroom. 
And I was excited because I learned that the kids had been working on a project that they were able to present as either a research paper, a PowerPoint, or a website. And a lot of the kids decided they were gonna build a website. And I was excited to be able to help them any way that I could. Do you know by the end of that class period, most of those kids decided just to do a research paper. When I asked them why, they said, because it was harder than we thought it would be to build a website. It's these experiences in my life and the fact that I'm a mother of two amazing girls that caused me to create Web Girls Code. Web Girls Code is a 501c3 nonprofit that offers hands-on training for elementary school girls in grades three through six, teaching them how to code web pages in HTML5. Now, the first question you may have is, why HTML5? Well, think back to when you started school. When you started in school, you learned basic math. One plus one is two, two minus two is zero. That was because that was gonna become the foundation for you to be able to learn more complicated math as you went through school. What's well, the same concept with HTML? That is the basic programming language of just about every website that's on the internet. So by teaching kids how to code with HTML in elementary school, we're giving them a foundation to be able to learn more complicated programming languages as they go through school. Now your next question may then be, well, why just girls? Well, according to Forbes.com, less than 10 of the top nine programming languages, less than 10% of those employed in the industry in America are female programmers. Web Girls Code wants to change that. We wanna bridge that gap. We wanna reach out to girls before peer pressure really sets in, before they start having self-esteem issues, we want them to show them that looking into computer sciences is something cool. It is something they can take an interest in. A few years ago, President Barack Obama was quoted as saying, one of the things that I really strongly believe in is that we need to have more girls interested in math, science, and engineering. We've got half the population that is way underrepresented in those fields, and that means that we've got a whole bunch of talent not being encouraged the way they need to. We have a lot of talent right here in Columbia, South Carolina, and we wanna encourage that talent. Now you may say, well, what's coding a website gonna do for anybody? When you are a coder, you actually are developing life skills. It helps to improve your mental math. For instance, if you have an image that's 1,200 pixels by 500 pixels, but the space on your website is 200 pixels by 50 pixels, trust me, you've gotta do some mental math to figure out how to proportionately reduce that picture to look great and fit in that space. It also helps with problem solving skills. When you have to troubleshoot a problem on a website, there's a lot of thinking, a thinking process that's involved. Well, that same thinking process can then carry over into real life when these girls have problems they have to overcome. And it enhances your creativity. How many of you have ever looked at a website and thought, man, that website is really ugly? Yeah, we've all done that. <laughs> well, by training them correctly, we're enhancing their creativity to really look at what does a consumer want to see when they look at a website? And we can train them to be able to build those websites that people want to see. Emily Post was quoted as saying, nothing is less important than which fork you use. Etiquette is the science of living. It embraces everything. It is ethics, it is honor. With Web Girls Code, we're teaching girls not only to code web pages and take an interest in STEM-based careers, but we're also helping them to develop life skills that will make them successful no matter what career they choose. So what I'm asking all of you here today is to look in your life, look around at the girls in your life, whether it's your sister, for those of you that have children, if you have daughters or a neighbor, and encourage them to look into coding and computer sciences. 
to really help them to see that they can start learning that now and how it will help them as they grow up. My passion is coding, and my goal is right here in Columbia, South Carolina, to create Web Girls. Thank you.